All right. So, Tom, welcome. Thanks for having me here. It's wonderful and it's a pleasure having you here. Uh, I know that you've done a lot for the vegan community and we are very much look forward to hearing uh, a little bit more about that. Maybe we can start by a quick background introduction to yourself, um, how you got started on the journey and, and what you're currently doing. Yeah. Well, my name is Tom. Um, I'm going to be 44 in October. I'm, I didn't grow up in an environment that would have set me on the path for veganism. My grandfather was a hunter, that's why the joke before. Um, my father, grandfather, and everybody in my family are chefs. We had rest I grew up in a restaurant and um, I became a chef myself. But before becoming a chef, I worked in a slaughterhouse for about three months and afterwards in a, in a butchery for another year. I hated it, <laughs> but my road was set up. I wanted to become a chef and they said, listen, if you want to become a chef, then this is the perfect way to start, you know? You know how the whole meat industry works, right? And even though I hated it and I wanted to become a vegetarian already at the age of 15, people thought, you're crazy, you know, I was into sports. Um, I was in the Swiss, Swiss national team for karate for about 10 years. I was a Swiss champion three times. I was vice European cup winner. And um, people said, listen, if you want to go on the route of, uh, you know, sports, then you stop eating meat, you're going to underperform. You won't have enough protein, you won't have enough iron, you won't have enough this and that. You'll just, you know, fall apart. And at the age of 15, 16, I also liked the taste of meat and I didn't have anybody like Gary Orofsky to wash my head and say, listen, this is not the way to do it. So I just carried on eating meat like everybody else. I carried on consuming, you know, dairy and eggs. Never questioned it. We also went fishing with the family. So I was far away from being a vegan. And somewhere around 2015, I saw Earthlings. And that brought everything up again. You know, like we started to work again. <laughs> it's like. Everything that I pushed down, you know, started to eat, try to ignore, came up again. And I was like, then it's a process. It just, it disturbed me. And, and then I started finding you, uh, vegan gains on YouTube. I don't know if you know vegan gains. Mm -hmm. He's a very aggressive YouTuber. He's vegan. <laughs> he has like 350,000 followers. And I hated him in the beginning because I was not vegan. And everything he said was against me, right? <laughs> but I watched him anyway. <laughs> and. Um, but I thought, listen, if vegans are so, you know, hateful and they're so aggressive and I don't even want to be a vegan, even though the message behind it is very positive, I, I actually like the lifestyle, but I didn't like this guy. <laughs> so I made it personal. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily, we went on a long journey with um, my wife and I went on a journey for three months. We traveled um, Australia and um, also Bali and we saw how destructive the whole coral reefs were and I also found Cowspiracy so I watched Cowspiracy <laughs> and after that I found um, what was it James Aspie your wake-up call I don't know if you know James Aspie if you haven't seen James Aspie your wake-up call it's an excellent speech on YouTube 40 45 minutes you have to watch it excellent I watched that guy and more and more like I was, I was in such a conflict with myself because out there, there I was like, watching these films and I knew that everything that was that they presented was clicking with my with my own values and my 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 corals, my, coral, my, my, my core values, but not with my actions. I would watch Cowspiracy and the next day I'll go and eat steak. And I didn't like that. <laughs> and I don't I didn't even know, I didn't say I'm gonna become a vegan. I was just like one day, one morning I woke up, but it was the first of January 2017, and I just said to my wife, listen, I'm gonna try it today. One day, one one breakfast. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> so I had some toast, some peanut butter. I had some orange juice, some fruit salad. And I thought that wasn't that difficult. <laughs> I'll try lunch as well. <laughs> we went to uh, Sea Life. <laughs> there was nothing there. They were educating us in Sea Life about the destruction of the oceans, about you know how how plastic is damaging everything. And then I went to the restaurant in Sea Life. And they didn't have one vegan option on the menu. There was only burgers and chicken. And I was like, why are you guys telling us about the environment and how fragile the whole ocean system is? And then you don't even sell one vegan option. I was angry. I sat down, I took my handy. I wrote this huge email to Sea Life. <laughs> they didn't answer, of course. <laughs> but I was like, I was the very angry vegan. I only had one vegan breakfast to <laughs> But I was really pissed off already. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And uh, I came home to Switzerland. Um, I told my, my wife's family that we're going vegan. Uh, her mother got tears in the eyes as if we just said we're going to Scientology or something. <laughs> uh, really, they were shocked because <laughs> they were shocked because you know her family is like cheese all the way through. They have like it's a farming a farming family. Um, there's meat and grill and barbecue all the time there. And like, and, and they didn't take me for serious because I was the guy like. If I would go out on Friday evenings, it would always be steakhouse, you know, I would bring huge portions of filet and I would make turkeys, like seven kilogram turkeys for Christmas. Now I come and say, hey, I'm a vegan. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, they didn't take me serious. They didn't take me serious at all. But after about a half a year, they, they thought, okay, maybe it's not just a diet. And then I started getting into activism. Because um, I don't know if you know that comparison of the dog. If, if you walk past somebody, you see someone beating a dog. The guy that just you know looks away and carries on is the meat eater. You know? No, no. It's, sorry, now I make the mistake myself. <laughs> if you walk up to someone, you see see a guy beating a dog, and you participate. You say, "Wow, that looks fun. Let's kick the dog." Then you're the meat eater. And the guy who says, "Oh, I don't like that. I'll just look away and I'll carry on." That's the vegan, but not the activist, right? Like he won't participate, he's not supporting it, but he's not going against it. And that was not enough for me. And so I thought, I have to talk with people. And I started the YouTube channel. Um, I started getting very active on Facebook. I actually left Facebook because I didn't like Facebook at all. I was off Facebook for about seven years. We both left Facebook because we thought we don't need it. it was, I'm still not a fan of Facebook, I just go there because it's a good platform to reach people. And um, got, got back on Facebook, and um, got invited from schools, got invited from in, uh, investor groups, um, King's Club, people wanted, just wanted to hear what I had to say about veganism, about the environment, about the animals and everything. And I'm just very straight. You know, I don't put flowers around it. Some people don't like that, but that's, not, that's the way I am. I just say how it is. because. The, one of the main reasons why I turned vegan and stayed vegan was Gary Ross. And a lot of people don't like Gary. But Gary is just straight. He just says how it is. There's no flowers around it. There's no exceptions. There's no silly excuses. And that's the way I like. I like to be talked to. I like people to be honest to me, to be straight. And that's, how, that's the way I, I communicate. Of course, I, I don't go up to people and say, you're a bad person because you're not vegan. That's not the way to go. But I think it's also good that you talk to people and ask, you know, try and find the conversation, try and help find a solution together, you know. So that's what I have to say. Tell now, maybe we'll show you some more questions. Thank you. There's, um, there's quite a few things that I'd like to really explore about, a bit more about the family. We can do that a little bit later. Uh, and also this activism. So I know there are people here who maybe aren't 100% vegan all the time, uh, but they're on a journey, they're on a path, and we want to welcome them into our community uh, and to support them in that journey in whichever way uh, they want to participate. So how do you see the fine balance between strong activism, you're a bad person, to do nothing and just walk on by? Where's the balance? I think you have to find the balance in yourself. What might be right for you is probably probably isn't one hundred percent right for me. But if you if you take out the concept of veganism, the concept of veganism, I love this buffet, I love the food. But veganism is not about food. You can have this fantastic buffet any time of the year. There's no reason to have animal products. We can see it here. There's no reason to have dairy, eggs, or anything. Was there something missing here? Did anybody go to the buffet and say, "Is this all?" <laughs> Did anybody go there this evening and say? This is so disappointing. <laughs> Look at this. No. So it's not just food. It's about the animals. And if I would take that dog there, this cute little guy there, <laughs> put him on the table, put a gun to his head to say, if you guys are not vegan by tomorrow, I'll shoot this dog. I think most people, because there is a pressure, they would do it, right? But we don't see the animals that get killed or that get exploited. We are so distant from these animals. 
we only see is a neatly packed egg or dairy product in the shops. And because there is no connection, there's a nice picture on it of a green farm, of a chicken in sunset, a farmhouse. And we believe this, you know, we believe this fairy tale because it makes us feel good. Because nobody likes to support animal abuse. Nobody, not even, not even before I was a vegan. Before I was a vegan, I thought I'm a good guy and I like animals. So uh, even the biggest meat eater is not pro animal abuse, I'm sure. They have just got this big disconnection program since birth. That if you can love a dog and eat a cow, and that there's no problem with that. Yeah, thank you. I think that's that compartmentalizing of what's cool and not cool is, is something we really need to um, to support and work on. Absolutely. Taking a kind of a step towards where you are now and in, in your profession, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what it is you do? I know you're into the bodybuilding and the nutrition. Uh, I know very often, particularly for men, uh, you know you need to eat meat to be strong, and, and this aspect we're, we're battling with that a lot. So. About your journey and maybe some nutritional aspects that are that you found along the way. Um, you look quite solid. I wouldn't uh, want to mess with him. So uh, yeah, tell me about it. It's it's very difficult to say what I what I do at the moment because I have several different income options. I, I work at my my basis the past 17 years is I'm a financial advisor. I do investments, life insurances, mortgages. That's my that's my base core in education that I have. After, after I was a chef, I turned I turned to a financial advisor at the age of 26. Also for financial reasons, because as a chef you work day and night, you don't earn enough money. Period. It's just a fact. <laughs> so, but over the past years, when you start questioning the whole system with with um, animals and our food system, you also start questioning the financial system. It doesn't end with animals. Veganism is just the first step. And then you're like, what about our education system? What about our health system? What about, you know, financial system? And you realize that there's this, this thread, this red thread, thread going through all of these systems. And there's so much going wrong. And I think veganism is, is, isn't always easy, to be honest. It can make a lot of things a lot more difficult. Uh, have you guys seen the film The Matrix? And becoming a vegan is like someone pulling that bloody plug, isn't it? <laughs> someone pulls the plug. And in the film The Matrix, there's this guy who says, I want to go back into that, stick me back in. I want to eat this steak. I want to have this ignorance, because ignorance is bliss. And it's not always easy, you know, if you peek behind the curtains and you see what's going on, you can't unsee it anymore. And that sometimes is a little bit difficult. But the, yeah. So tell me about the nutrition, yeah, um, the bodybuilding, this yeah. aspect as well. Yeah. Okay, I have this, I have this group uh, called uh, V-Form. I have several athletes. They are um, from the martial arts. They are um, bodybuilders, crossfitters. Some of them are really, really crazy fit. And if, if you haven't checked him on uh, Instagram yet, Manuel Granecker, check the guy. Like he, This guy sets different limits. It's unbelievable. He'll just go for a little 30 kilometer run in the morning for fun. <laughs> it's crazy. And he's really buff, you know, he does like one arm pull ups. It's crazy. And this guy has been vegan for, for a few years, and we've started to coach people now with, uh, with people that want to stay fit, stay, stay buff. You also look like you work out a lot. And there's this, this total fail conception in, in nutrition, especially for men, that you have to eat meat to build muscle right and they're always trying to find more reasons because suddenly they realize oh the protein stuff works so now they go for b12 and you can explain b12 then they'll say iron then you can explain the iron they'll say zinc and you can explain zinc they'll say creatine you know there's always another thing there's always like they're chasing a reason why it's not possible to build muscle and i can guarantee you that if you switch to a plant-based diet then you'd have to do it right you can't just start leaving away all the animal products and just eating kale all day long and imagine that it works. It doesn't work that way. You have to know what you're doing. If you want to build muscle, you have to know how much protein to eat. You have to know which are the best protein sources. You have to know which are the best anti-inflammatory compounds. If you just eat vegan junk food, it won't work. 
you'll have digestive issues, you won't be healthier. That's what I'm saying. There's a big difference between going vegan for the animals or wanting to build muscle and stay fit and healthy. I know vegans this fat, I know vegans this skinny. Going vegan does not mean that you're going to be part of Game Changers too. <laughs> like, Game Changers, you saw the film, right? Yeah. Everybody saw it, right? If you watch the Game Changers, everybody thinks like, wow, I'm going to start eating kale tour, I'm going to be like, you know, these guys crushing world records, Olympia, uh, Olympian medalists. It doesn't work that way. But every, everybody that does sport knows one thing. The biggest benefit you can get from nutrition is a fast recovery. And my recovery is so much quicker than it used to be. It's unbelievable. I did this really heavy back workout yesterday with lat pull for the 16 sets. We did so many hard things. I felt a little bit, you know, just lay up. Oh yeah, I used to train my back yesterday. When I used to smash chest, you know, like before I was a vegan, I would be like, oh, so painful. Like five days later still, oh, my chest, you know, sometimes a whole week. The recovery as a vegan is so fast because you give your body all these, you know, anti-inflammatory compounds. If you get a green smoothie, if you get good electrolytes, and if you get magnesium, if you get all the good stuff from the plants, and it's all, it's not acidic. All animal foods are acidic. And you've already produced so much acidity in your body in the workout. Especially runners can tell me, you know, like if they go for a hard run, They'll feel their, 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 their quads, you know, and their uh, calves, you know, for days yeah. if, they have, if they don't get, uh, you know, enough liquid inside in and a lot of inflammatory um, suppressing compounds. And that's why the, the, the vegan, the vegan um, or the plant-based meals are absolutely superior, you know, if you, look at those, if you look at those compounds. And you have no cholesterol, you have a, be a better blood flow. You get a lots of L-arginine. You know what L-arginine is? No. L-arginine is it, it opens up your vessels. It helps your blood flow. And if you eat a plant-based nutrition, you have a lot more L-arginine. For men with erectile dysfunction, they sell L-arginine um, as a supplement. Or they, if, if people have problem, if, if guys have a problem with, with their prostate. They'll start giving them things yeah. from uh, pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds are one of the biggest sources in nature for allergenin. So it all goes together. Blood flow. This is blood flow. This is blood flow. So better sport, better recovery, better sex. It all goes together. Longer life. <laughs> why, why, why not go vegan? <laughs> So ladies, if you look around, more vegan then. <laughs> it's not a guarantee, but, <laughs> but your chances, are, your chances, great. I'll take everything. <laughs> um, good. All right, let's take a little pivot. So we've talked about the nutrition, your plant-based diet, uh, the bodybuilding aspect. That it's kind of, it's not, you know, it's possible in the. In the on a green way of living, the health benefits. Uh, let's kind of move towards the final set of questions around your own business and also some of the challenges you've had to face now being a vegan. Maybe some of the, the questions that you're asked and then how do you respond on those? Um, yeah, you explore that a little bit. I think as a, as a financial advisor, the most difficult thing is that I get invited sometimes to dinner. Or I get, I get invited to business business dinners, business lunches. They all, you always, I don't even want to talk about veganism, but you always end up talking about veganism in the end. You know, they're like, who is the preachy guy? No, I didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to go for lunch. <laughs> and then I say, yeah, let's go to Tibbets. Why Tibbets? Um, I, I don't eat meat, okay? But I know it's fantastic. The restaurant, you can have a salad there, you know. And, Usually, it's, it's, you, you always end up talking about it. And I actually wanted to go and talk about finances, and you end up talking about negative. <laughs> because the questions are always there. Um, we have another business, my wife and I. I don't know if you've seen the, the flyers inside, Hofnus. Um, one, one difficult thing for us when we switched was the cheese. A lot of people um, don't have a problem with giving up meat, but a lot of people have a problem with giving up cheese. 
cheese is like one of the biggest addictions, I think, especially if you're living in Switzerland. All of the dairy products, not just cheese, but especially cheese. And there are reasons for that. The reason is it's, it's high in fat, it's high in salt, um, it has casein inside, it has casomorphines inside, it has compounds inside that are made to addict the baby calf to the mother cow. So the baby calf is supposed to get addicted to mommy's milk, to drink as much as possible, to grow as quick as possible, to be independent, right? Now, the whole balance of hormones, of the proteins, is absolutely not comparable with the, with the compounds of breast milk in a human mother. But we concentrate those hormones, we, we take out water, we concentrate, we put in cheese, we up the salt, and then we eat it, so it makes us, it makes us uh, the addicts, the cheese addicts. So, one thing we loved on pasta was parmesan, so we created musmizan. Musmizan is a plant-based option, so anybody who likes parmesan on, on, uh, on their pasta, on salads, um, we have it inside, you can try it if you want. We have a few glasses here, if someone would like to buy a glass and take it home. <laughs> um, yeah, and this is, this, is our, this is our heart business. We're in Coop, we're, we're in uh, farming Pumpetejo now. We're selling on uh, quite, a, quite a wide scale, we're producing about over 1.2 tons now per month. So it's not just a small business. So uh, we're, still, we're still hoping to grow. We've got a lot of things to go till then. And I'm also trying to, you know, promote a little bit of veganism with this product. The, the strange thing is, people buy our product, and they will post it on Instagram, like uh, some pasta with chicken slices, <laughs> or, or, or a grilled fish with our lemon usmizan on top, and they post us, hey, it's great, and we love coffee and usmizan. In the beginning, I was like, I'm not gonna like this picture. Why should I like this picture? They don't even know what I'm about. But then I have to, I have to say to myself, listen, these people don't know that there is a vegan company and a vegan ideologist behind this whole thing. And it's one good thing that they are not using real cheese. They have got a fish. Okay, I'm not happy about that. But they're using something that isn't dairy. So I'll give it a like. I'll give it a like for the non vegans for, 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 for the vegan stuff, not for the non-vegan stuff on the picture. Because this is what, what I say. You have to support people. Support the small changes. It will encourage them to make the next step. And not you still got fish there. Like, I'm not going to buy your product again. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's, uh, and the more you sell, the challenge. more you can then provide yeah. the message. And, and, and they follow us and they, they, they understand after a while. And they always see that, that there's a second profile on Instagram and there I'm on. I'm really straight there. <laughs> I've had people unfollow me sometimes because I'm, I, I, you know, I've seen these videos, I don't, I don't even speak German, and they're desperate. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, we, we, we made two, two videos on uh, comments about Watson. You know Watson? The, the newspaper Watson? Yeah. There was a, a newspaper article, Why Vegans Are So um, Disturbing. So what? What was it they called? It's so nervous. <laughs> the Watson, and there were 800 comments under that. 800! And you can imagine the quality of the comments, right? So we picked out the best 12, and we made a video about it. <laughs> yeah, it was fun, you can watch it. <laughs> Alright, very last question, and then we'll open it up. Um, one of the, the, the areas that I'm interested in as well is saying a little bit more about the family life. So I know that you have, you're married, you have three boys, and you know, do you raise them vegan? Uh, did you have to think about that decision? Because it's, it's fine as adults, you make the choice, but you are then making that choice for them at that age. Uh, could you maybe tell us a little bit about that? Um, it was never a question that we would carry on giving our children any animal products, because it would have been strange. We've got involved, of course. You know, what are, what are the critical substances that children need to grow? Like zinc, vitamin D3, omega-3, B12, iron. We got informed and we did it. And honestly, was anybody here asked as a child at the age of two or three, would you like to be a vegan or not? No, they just fed you meat, right? 
That's what it was at my place. Nobody asked me if I wanted to eat animals. I just got fed animals. It's the norm. Like when people tell me, but you're not fair to your children, you don't give them a choice. <laughs> your children don't have a choice either. They just get animals. Right? So when I sit down with my children, I talk very honestly. I also have an interview with my children on Instagram. My little five-year-old can explain to you why we, don't, why we don't drink dairy, why we don't consume eggs. They'll tell you that the baby chicks get gassed and shredded and killed, that the, that the mummy and the baby cow get separated off of her. And if I tell them, listen, do you think this is a good thing? They're babies. They're five and seven and 11 years old. They know that this is wrong. And it's not, you're not allowed to. I ask them, would you like to support this? And they say, no. Shall we buy vegan ice cream then? Yeah, let's buy vegan ice cream. Done. We don't forbid them. And honestly, if they would go to a birthday party and they would eat like an ice cream or a gummy bear and it's not vegan, honestly, I won't cry myself to sleep. Thank you. <laughs> you want to cry here, it's okay. <laughs> it's a safe place. It's a safe place. Here with you. <laughs> yeah. well, but you, you get a lot of critics. As a vegan parent, you, you get a lot of critics. But you also get a lot of open-minded parents asking why and how. And we've had wonderful experiences with people that organize a vegan birthday party, even though their children, their children are not vegan. They will organize a birthday party where everything's vegan, just so our children can also be invited. So these are, you know, there are very motivating, moving moments as a vegan parent, and there are some frustrating ones. The, the, the good moments, I would say we have a lot more good moments. And the, our, you know, our different parents are trying really hard. My brother is not vegan, but he will organize everything that my children, if they spend the weekend with him, that everything is vegan. You know, and it's like, it's good. I think, that, I think that's what's special, right? We've got people who care and love us, uh, love us in our lives, and the ones that do care make the effort. And yeah. it's not about trying to convince them, but they respect you and your choice, and you respect theirs. Yeah, it's, it's nice.